While Universal Orlando still hasn't announced the Jurassic Coaster being built at Islands of Adventure, they have at least acknowledged that a bird of prey started living on it last week. Some more coaster track pieces have been installed since our last update. Most of the station area is now enclosed, and we may have spotted what looks to be the first coaster train car on site. Let's dig into all that and more in this VelociCoaster update. We've talked about how Universal confirmed that they do intend to use the trademark VelociCoaster for something, and this past week it was used in an article from the New York Times. The story focused mainly on the filming for Jurassic World Dominion, but it mentioned how a tie-in VelociCoaster is under construction at Universal Orlando Resort in Florida. Universal, of course, has not confirmed the name, or even that they're building a coaster. But it's still interesting to see it addressed by such a big news organization. The coaster, which we've been covering here on the channel for over two years, is being built in the Jurassic Park section of Islands of Adventure. The worksite is looking more and more like the proposed layout we revealed last year. The station building is nearly entirely enclosed. Here you can see an opening where the exterior covered queue will connect to the indoor queue. Currently, it's just a big opening in the wall. The entrance for the ride will be at the front of the exterior queue section once it's built. Zooming out, we can get a good look at that tall top hat section of the ride. Riders will be launched up the top hat in what will likely be the ride's fastest section. They will then come back down in front of the Discovery Center. Last week at the park, I discovered an osprey that appeared to be creating a nest at the very top of this section of the coaster. An osprey is a bird of prey, also known as a raptor, and the irony of a raptor building a nest atop a raptor coaster was not lost on me. Since then, however, it does appear that the osprey's nest may be gone, although her poop stains remain. The bird is actually returned in the days following, this time with a friend, so it's possible she may attempt to create a new nest. Ospreys are a protected species here in Florida, so evicting her may not be as easy if she were to stay long enough to lay eggs. While we're looking at the top of the tallest section of the track, what appears to be several LSM fins have been installed. Some have referred to these as trim brakes, but I have to wonder if it's what Intamin, the coaster's manufacturer, refers to as an anticipation stall. If this is an anticipation stall, they could be used to slow the trains on their way down the descent, allowing riders to anticipate the next section of the ride. They wouldn't bring the trains to a full stop, like Shikra at Busch Gardens Tampa, instead only slowing the train a bit before the drop. Although others I've spoken with believe they're only there for backup safety reasons, only time will tell what these fins will be used for, after we see this start testing or official information is released. Here we can see progress on the waterfront area, including what might be some sort of water feature for the splashdown after the trains come down from the top hat. You can also see a poured railing that goes along the entire length of the walkways along the water. More railings have been installed near the bypass bridge as well. We're not yet sure what this round foundation is going to be in the middle, some rumors say it may only be for a power or a pump house, which would likely be surrounded by trees. Others have speculated it could be for some sort of themed element. While this last turn isn't completed yet, before heading into the final brake runs around the maintenance building, the cage theming has been installed along both sides of the structure. Track has been installed for some of this last section of the ride as well. Once connected together in a couple spots here, the entire circuit will be complete as this last area is all that remains. Here's an overview of the queue, load, and maintenance building. You can see how the cage theming that has been installed near the end of the ride matches the cage theming for the first part of the ride on the right. We can see that there is an opening on the back side of the maintenance building. If we look closer inside, there appears to be what many believe to be a coaster train car wrapped in plastic. The coaster trains are expected to be shaped similarly to Pantheon at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. To me, the plastic wrapped train car seen in the maintenance bay looks to be shaped like this as well. Some of the last sections of track for the ride, which will be installed here, can be seen sitting in the field a couple miles away from Universal Orlando. We're down to just a few pieces left. Let's move on to some of the work being done around the first sections of the ride. Here is the load building, with the first part of the ride seen on the right. Atop the load structure is a small third floor. The inside queue is located on the first floor, 
load station is on the second, and this smaller third floor is expected to be used for team member areas, including a break area and a control room. The tower, with the Falls Warden lookout on top, is actually an elevator shaft that could be used to take guests to and from the load area on the second floor and team members to and from that third floor. Stairs were also installed, but they are now out of view. From the ground, we can see the orange walls of the third floor sitting below the fake Warden lookout. In the foreground, work continues on themed elements around the first part of the ride. The work going on here might be for a themed window. This could give everyone at load a view into the Raptor enclosure for the first section of the ride. It might be themed similarly to the windows overlooking the Indominus Rex paddock in Jurassic World, but here it's for a Raptor paddock. Here is the ride's first launch, coming out of the small Scene 1 show building. We're expecting Scene 1 to somehow involve the opening of a transfer gate to allow us into the paddock. Then we're launched out into the fenced enclosure. This second arrow is pointing to the second and final launch. This is the long launch that takes us up to the top hat in the middle of the ride. Everything between this first and second launch is going to be absolutely covered in rock work. The first launch takes us from the cage theming directly into a dark tunnel beneath a massive pile of rocks. And what looks to be framing for additional rock work is being installed to help block the view of what is coming next around every turn in this area. Some of the rock work has already been completed and is receiving paint, and even fake plants to help complete the look. While new, taller scaffolding has been installed to work on the next section. It's looking like this first half of the ride is going to be jam-packed with tight turns and surprises around every corner, while the second half will really open up and let us enjoy the speed of a Velociraptor. That's all for now. Be sure to check out our recent vlog for more details on the ride, as well as other projects going on around the resort. And a big thanks to BioReconstruct on Twitter for providing us with these incredible aerial photographs. If you like what we do, consider joining our Patreon for additional content and early releases. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.